Andy Lesser. I was wondering if you might be able to compare and contrast destructive cults such as Scientology with groups such as the Marine Corps, fraternities, or the police force. I can see that there are some big differences. For example, there is no enforced disconnection if you choose to leave these groups. However, I think that there are a lot of similarities too. I've been really interested lately in the way that mind control tactics are used to build group loyalty in settings outside of what we might consider traditional cults. Would love to hear your insights into this. Well, there's certainly no question about it. Um, a person doesn't have to be involved in a religious group or organization in order to be involved in um, you know, a group that is using undue influence or mind control techniques or, um, or thought coercion in order to get its members aligned with what that group is trying to do. We see this in politics, in uh, social groups, as I've said before, in, in um, you know, in, in uh, schools. I mean, this, this comes out in kind of anywhere where groups can form. <laughs> you can end up with a leader who, or leaders and followers who end up in this kind of strange dynamic uh, or relationship where there is an undue amount of influence. And I think that's really the judgment factor, the, 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 the point of decision as to whether somebody is involved in a group that is constructive for them or destructive for them, is the degree of undue influence that, is, that has to be exerted on them in order to get them to be part of the group, uh, stay with the group, you know, not leave the group, uh, and work for and do the things that the group leaders are telling them to do. I, I thought I would pull up the, the list of, um, the checklist of cult characteristics as written out by uh, Yanya Lalich um, that I have referred to before and actually made a video using. Um, I'm not going to go through all the points here, but just some of the points that you could, and I'll put a link to this in the, in the notes section of this video, but some of the points that you, know, you can look at on this checklist when you're weighing out whether a group is a destructive cult or not is um, things like uh, the group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader, uh, whether alive or dead, right, regarding the belief system, ideology, and practices, um, or questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Um, number three, mind-altering practices are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. And um, here we're talking about such things as meditation, chanting, uh, denunciation sessions, or debilitating work routines are examples of the kind of things we're talking about there. Um, the leadership dictates, sometimes in great detail, how members should think, act, and feel. Uh, for example, members must get permission to date, change jobs, marry, or leaders prescribe what types of clothes to wear, where to live, whether or not to have children, how to discipline children, and so forth. So, you know, you have these, you have these different characteristics that you can sort of look at, and a destructive group doesn't have to, you know, or a cult doesn't have to meet every one of these characteristics. Like, for example, there's another one on here about how they're um, you know, have an excessive amount of attention on money, uh, or another one on, you know, a lot of attention on getting new members, right? Um, so you look at something like the Marine Corps or the police force, and I don't, you know, I don't see those groups as, as destructive cults. I see that there are uh, definitely individuals in those groups who will engage in uh, coercion or, or maybe use some methods of undue influence or, um, or psychological influence on people. I mean, what's boot camp? You know, that, that's, that's definitely breaking down a person's personality in a number of ways. But, um, but a person is, you know, comes into it and is always free to leave. I mean, there isn't, you know, you, you have a procedure to leave such a group, right? And, um, and that, you know, and then there isn't disconnection and there are not, you know, they're not gonna stalk you and harass you and try to ruin your life if you don't want to be a Marine anymore, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, yes, there is an excessive amount of um, belief, 
I guess you could say, developed or fostered in those kind of groups because you're trying to get people into a position, uh, especially in the military, where you're trying to get people into a position where they're willing to kill for an idea or for a belief system or for a, a, a nation, right? Yes, there are mind control techniques used um, by such groups that you, that you said in your question, Andy. And um, so you really have to look at or, or value, you know, judge a group by their purpose. Is their purpose what they say their purpose is? Um, you know, their goals, are they achieving their goals? Are their stated goals constructive or destructive? Are their real goals constructive or destructive, right? Um, and I'm not, again, not going to get into the military as an aspect because this applies to any group. This, is, this could apply to, you know, the Boy Scouts. This could apply to some cheerleaders, you know, I mean, a cheer squad. Any group could devolve into a destructive cult situation and any group could use mind control techniques without being a destructive cult. And any group can also just be constructive 100%, be totally above the boards, totally open about what they're doing and be completely voluntary and not use any methods of undue influence at all. So, you know, there's a scale there, but, um, but I think those are ways that you could, you know, kind of gauge or judge what you're looking at.